once heard a very beautiful saying. It's, well, it goes like this. Always pray to have eyes that see the best in others, to have a heart that forgives the worst in others, to have a mind that forgets the bad that happens, and to have a soul that is focused on God. So to have eyes that see the best, a heart that forgives the worst, a mind that forgets the bad, and a soul that is always seeking and focused on God. I think it very much embraces the spirit of our gospel reading today when this woman is brought to Jesus and she who had committed one of the uh, three terrible offenses of the time, which was adultery, murder, and idolatry. But really, no matter what the sin was, it, it does not matter. The point is, is that this group of people brought her to Jesus saying she sinned without looking into their own hearts without seeing where they themselves were. So when they brought her to Jesus, they were looking to trap Jesus because they wanted to see what he would do, thinking, well, if he lets her go and says we don't have to stone her, he's disobeying the Mosaic law, but if he says you can stone her, well, then he's disobeying the civil law of the Romans because the Romans said the Jews could not have capital punishment. And so we have kind of a conundrum there for the Lord, what does he do? He goes and he starts writing on the ground. There's a number of theories about what he was doing there on the ground. Some have said that he was similar to many men of the time. And I think that there's probably some value to this particular practice, that if you're brought, something is brought to you and you're not sure exactly what to do, at that particular time, what many men would do, instead of getting angry right away, or if they did not know how to respond, they would bend down on the ground and they would just start doodling in the sand. Kind of maybe not a bad idea, gentlemen, that when you're not quite sure what to do or what to say or how to respond, I think Jesus gives us a good example here. No matter what he was writing down on the ground, he said, stop and think before your mouth starts rambling and you say something you're going to regret, how much better it would be to just simply think for a moment. So it's possible he sat and he kind of doodled. Another theory is that he was able to know the sins of those Pharisees, of those men who had brought the woman to him. So the thought is he started writing down on the ground their sins. And they saw it and they were shocked. Because probably their sins could have been the woman's sins and could have been many other people's sins. And they were amazed at that, so they didn't want to speak up. No, they walked away. And what did they do? He went and he got back down again and started doodling or writing sins in the ground. But he stopped and he thought about it. Interesting, he did not want to look into their eyes. Maybe he wanted to avoid looking into their eyes because he saw evil in their eyes. We often hear about how the eyes are the mirror of the soul. We kind of know when you look into somebody's eyes if maybe they're up to something kind of shady. Maybe Jesus would have gotten very angry at them, even more so when he looked at their eyes and saw that they were also hiding things. So he says, you know, you who are without sin, cast the first stone. He very much wanted to make an impression upon them, and it was really the gift of mercy, the gift of great forgiveness, which God gives in abundance. And most especially during this Lenten season, it's a chance for each one of us to think about that gift of mercy. What is behind our eyes? What is on our soul that perhaps needs to be rectified with the Lord? During Lent, we have the chance to go to confession. We stress the opportunity for forgiveness. Maybe it's been a while since you've gone. If it's been a while, then this is the year to go. Why wait any longer? Eventually, one day, you're going to come face to face with God. 
and he's going to be able to read into your soul. He's going to know what's there. The sacrament of reconciliation is a sacrament of love. Just as Jesus had a love for this woman, in the same way, the practice of confession is also a sacrament of love, of welcoming to the church, a sign of an extension of God's mercy. And the priest is not there to judge. The priest is there to be a dispenser of forgiveness and to be a representative of the community. Because when we sin, it's an offense against God and also against someone else. So we are there in order to dispense absolution, to forgive, but also to welcome you home, to welcome you back into the fold. I would encourage you to consider looking in the bulletin this week. We've listed a lot of times for confession. Instead of having a big reconciliation service this year, we've been having every Wednesday evening, Friday evening, Saturday afternoon, Wednesday morning, by appointment with one of the priests. We'll, we'll make the time for it. Please don't wait till Holy Week. You may wonder, well, why did you not do a service this year? Well, I kind of found that sometimes when we would have 15 priests here, it was almost never enough. And sometimes there was sinning going on when people were getting very impatient in the line and cutting the line and going where they shouldn't have been going. So I said, well, forget that this time. We're going to have much more times for availability. It's worked out beautifully so far. Yes, you may have to wait a few moments, but I would encourage you to consider availing yourself of that opportunity. And I also assure you that whatever is said in the confessional or if you are out in the colonnade area, if that's where we're set up, it stays there. The walls don't talk. There is a seal of confession. We as priests take it very seriously. Where else can you go to say, Lord, I want to do, to do better. I may have a past, but I also have a future. And with God, there is a great future. And also especially if you think, well, I don't think I have any sins. Well, if you have no sins, I really want to meet you. <laughs> because I want to proclaim to all the world the Messiah has come back and living in Altamont Springs here. So please, I would just ask if you just think about that. If you're not sure, well, maybe I don't know what to bring. I don't know what to say. Go online, we have an examination of conscience. A great opportunity to be able to look through and to say, okay, well, what are areas in my life that I can improve upon? What are some areas that I can make right with God? He looks forward to that. And he looks forward to meeting each one of us so that when we celebrate Easter this year in a most special way, when we experience the beauty of Christ walking out of the tomb and we celebrate resurrection, we can also celebrate a resurrection of our spirit and a desire even further to have eyes that see the best, a heart that forgives the worst, a mind that forgets the bad, and a soul that is focused on God's.